Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're getting to know UiPath Studio a little better. And we're going to do that by looking at the project settings and the studio settings. So let's get to it. So to get to the studio settings, you go to the home menu and you select the settings tab. Then inside this page, you have a few different pages and we'll start with general. In this page, you have the language setting and they have added more languages. I'm still waiting for Danish but it's not here yet. But if you like one of these languages, you can select it and use that. The theme decides whether or not you use the light or the dark theme in studio. I like the dark theme because it doesn't hurt my eyes as much. And I look at this studio many hours every day. So I like the dark one. Telemetry, those are two settings that send back data to UiPath uh, about how you use studio, both performance data, but also if you're using the object repository, it'll send back uh, anonymous information about the descriptors that you create using UiPath Studio. So if you uh, enable both of these, basically you are helping UiPath create a better product. Then there's a reset settings button that will reset all of the settings for Studio altogether. If we go to the design page, there's a few more settings in here. One is the auto backup interval, and that decides how often your open files are backed up. I just don't understand why this is a millisecond setting. The publish project timeout setting is measured in seconds, and that makes a lot more sense. And that determines how quickly a publish will time out if it's not succeeding. The open project behavior defines what files are opened when you open Studio. It can be the files you last had open when you were working in Studio. It could be the main entry point of your project or it could be no files at all. In Force Analyzer before publish, well, if you know about the uh, Workflow Analyzer, it's a tool that will analyze all of your files and give you suggestions on how to improve it. And I'll make a separate video about this, but it's a really helpful tool and you can enforce that all files are analyzed before you publish them. And I like to have this enabled. You can also enforce this analysis before running a project. I don't like that. Uh, so I have that disabled. You can also set that you want to analyze only RPA files and not files that contain test cases. And also you can enforce that you need to check in your project to your Git repository or whatever you're using before publishing it. And that's a good idea to have enforced. I don't on this machine, but I would definitely do it on my normal development machine. In the section called execution, you can define how many lines are available inside of your output console. 2000 lines is fine for me. You can also define what is the default run or debug behavior. Do you want to debug file, debug project, run file, or run project? I usually use the F5 and F6 keyboard shortcuts to run my file anyways, but this is how it's set in my studio. Minimize on run defines whether or not studio is minimized when you run a project. And then we get to the design style. And there's a setting missing here compared to if I was using Studio Pro, and that is in Studio Pro, you can opt to use C Sharp as the programming language. You cannot do that in UiPath Studio. So that setting is not here. So we're stuck with using Visual Basic, but that's fine with me. Creating docked annotations basically defines whether or not an annotation that you create is docked from the beginning, or if it's sort of in a pop-out state. Use Modern for new project defines whether or not a project is born with the modern design experience as the default behavior. I've made a video about the modern design experience and you can check that out. There's a link to it in the description below. Object repository is closely related to the modern design experience. And this option is actually disabled unless you have the use modern for new projects enabled. Then you can enforce that you have to use the object repository. I'm not going to do that now, but it's not a bad idea actually. It's a little more trouble, but you'll be happy in the end. And then slim view for collapsed activities that just defines whether or not a collapsed activity takes up a little more or a little less space. So those are the design settings. The location settings defines where things are stored. So the project path is where projects are created. The publish process URL is where things are published to. And that has three settings, one for processes, one for libraries, and one for project templates. And then you have the custom workflow analyzer rules location. If you have custom rules stored in a file, you can set that path here. Manage sources is something I'm also going to do a separate video on, because this is where package management comes into play. And this defines where you look or where Studio looks for packages to show in your package manager. And you can add new uh, locations here, both local and remote. You can see here that I have a couple of user defined ones. One is online and one is on my local desktop. Uh, so that's what this is for. 
license and profile. Uh, now I'm connected to Orchestrator, so I cannot change my local license, but that would enable me to activate a local license if I had one of those. And the view or change profile, that enables me to switch between UiPath Studio and Studio X, if of course I have an allocated license. And then the team settings defines whether or not I use Git, SVN, or TFS for my version control and code repositories. I have Git enabled because that's what I prefer using right now at least. So these are in short, the studio settings. Let's move on to project settings. So in my project here, if I select the project tab and go up to the little gear here, these are the project settings and there's a ton of them. I'll go through the most general settings and then we'll take a peek at some of these, but there are hundreds of settings down here. So we're not going to go through all of those. So in the general settings, we have the name of the project. This project is called settings, as you can see here at the top. And you can also give it a project description. The disable pause option simply defines whether or not you'll be able to pause the execution of this project from the UiPath Assistant. The starts in background option defines that this can be run concurrently with other automations as long as it's not using any UI automation stuff. The supports persistence option defines whether or not this automation will support being suspended in a human in the loop scenario if you're using Action Center, for example. So this is a good idea, and I've talked about that in my Action Center series. There are two videos in that series. Links are in the description below. So check those out if you want to know more about this option. PIP Ready is a flag you can set on the project to indicate that this automation can run as a picture-in-picture -picture automation. Now, funny enough, I have also made a video about the picture-in-picture -picture feature. So check that out. But this setting really doesn't change anything about the project itself. But if you set it to true, you won't be prompted with a warning if you try to execute this automation as a picture-in-picture -picture automation. The starts in PIP setting simply defines that when you run this automation, it by default starts as a picture-in-picture -picture automation. And then finally, the modern design experience defines whether or not this automation uses the modern design experience and also activates the object repository inside Studio if you enable this option. So those are the general project settings. Now, this is the project analyzer I was talking about earlier. This is where you simply set the different options for all of the rules that you want to apply when running the workflow analyzer. And as I said, I'll do a separate video on that and post a link in the description below for that video when it's ready. But if you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, you'll get a notification when I post that video. So why not do that now? So in addition to the general and workflow analyzer settings, we have these activity settings and these vary from anything from timeout values on different types of actions and activities to what OCR engine should you use. Um, all kinds of stuff that really just lets you drill down into the nitty gritty of how UiPath Studio works. And I'm just not going to get into all of these settings in this video. So I hope you got a taste of what settings are available by watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And as I said, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Bye.